Hello. Uh, because Arabian Night is right now the hottest speed game on the planet. And I happen to promise that I would record a speedrun tutorial on it. And I'm gonna say this probably also works as a walkthrough because uh, the game is really damn cryptic at times. So the speedrun routes are easier than playing the game through casually. But I do recommend that you at least try to play it casually and then, then go for the speedrun strat because uh, I know you're playing this because the game is fucking stupid and full of stupid dialogue. And uh, the speedrun skips a lot of that, so just go explore the areas and <laughs> see what you can find. There's, there's a lot to this game. <laughs> but yeah, uh, in the description for the video I, I will include uh, links to the game. I think it's safe to call it Abandonware at this point. Uh, as well as instructions on how to get it to work and maybe some walkthroughs if you want to try to try to go for those casual intended routes. And if you can't get the game to work with the instructions, uh, don't bother asking me for help because I probably won't know. There have been some computers where I just can't get the game to work at all and on some it works and crashes more than others. It, it's not consistent. Just, just hope for the best. We, we'll... well, yeah. Good luck. <laughs> anyway, uh, be before I get into the game, just explain what kind of controls and settings I'm using. Uh, I'm playing this uh, at 1024 by 768 I'm using that exactly for one jump. I have a setup that requires me to see the edge of the screen. That's pretty much the reason. And even that's not important, so you can probably figure it out without that. Sound? Well, you want to have a dialogue sound a, a bit higher than the rest, just obvious reasons. That's why we're playing this game. Uh, mouse is really awkward in this game, so I just set the sensitivity to the minimum. Experiment and get used to it, if you can. As for controls, the default ones are absolute crap. Just try to make them work for you. I'm using W, A, S, and D for moving, Q and E for sidestepping, left shift for walking. It's, uh, make some jumps easier if you can walk to the spot. Because uh, once when you're walking, uh, you won't fall off ledges. So it's it's a useful thing to have. Skip or jump in space. Defend. You don't need that ever. Attack and action. Is left mouse. Action F. Uh, knife and bomb. You will be needing these, and they're by default in one and two. I think it works just fine. Uh, you only need one of these magic uh, attacks. F1. Maybe you could map that better, but I've gotten used to just having it in the default. F1. Put away and take out weapon. R. Need that a few times. Center camera. Don't need that. C inventory. You need to press this once in the run, so it can be whatever. Wheel up and down to select items in the inventory. Use object. Is uh, This is the most important key in the game, because this is what you're going to be using when you do fluid jumps. And I've mapped it to right mouse button, so I can just easily keep spam spamming it. Throw object, not needed. Fast save and fast load. I, I'm saving with tab, because uh, I save a lot, and it's easily accessible. Uh, and load is 3, because uh, once you die in this game, like after you hit the ground and die to fall damage, you can't save at that point. You need to go through the menu and load from there. And the game has some technical issues making that even worse. So I mapped it to 3, so I can try to load before I hit the ground whenever I mess up a jump. Seems to work well for me. May, may not be optimal for anyone else. Anyway, let's actually get into the game. So I'm using splits just to help you keep track of how far into the run we are. Now you can already see the fantastic tutorial messages are appearing kind of off-screen. Uh, someone was telling me that they couldn't see the messages at all, so whenever the game is pausing, especially in the first level, it's probably a tutorial message, even if you can't see it. There is also a chance that it's an error message. But those should always appear and honestly the game crashes rather than shows you any messages when something goes wrong like that. I just press anything to get rid of those. Anyway, uh, right, ah, uh, this technical issue I was mentioning. Uh, I'm playing this in a window and uh, at whenever the 
the game changes resolution. The mouse escapes that window, so while I'm turning uh, in the game, my mouse is also moving somewhere in the screen. And to fix that, I'm gonna click outside the game window and then click back in the game window. And now the mouse works again, as intended. Yeah. This game keeps accepting inputs even when you know, it's not focused. So just be aware of that if you tab out to do something else and then find yourself dead. Yeah. First thing, I'm gonna grab a bomb from this uh, base. It's uh, not necessary, but especially in the first ones, I recommend picking it up because bombs are pretty valuable. I'm just gonna run up to this tombstone, grab the fireball. Actually, just get used to the controls at this point might be a good idea. Right, uh, in this level, the exit is over there somewhere. But uh, there are two ways to get there. The first one is to clip through that wall and do a jump, like a, a diagonal jump over there, grab a rope and continue to the exit as as intended. It's a it's a pretty pretty tricky jump. I did that in my uh, record run, which is like forty one nineteen. If you want to check that out, do it. Uh, but I would recommend a much slower route, to just jumping through that wall. And, uh, well, it's, it's more amusing, let's be honest. Anyway, to actually do the clip, all you need to do is stand on the edge of this platform, like I am right now. Maybe a... not quite, yeah. Like this, so you are kind of falling all the time. And once that happens, you go to the wall and uh, turn the camera just a bit so, so Alice starts to vibrate through the wall. You need to be aligned pretty well with, with the wall itself uh, to go through. I uh, don't think it's like pixel precise, but if you if your angle is off too much, there's a good chance that the game hard locks and you have to like open task manager to fix it. Yeah, just get next to the wall, turn the camera, there we go. We're vibrating. Just if he slows down you can try to move the camera to get a faster speed. And once once Ali's ass crack is true, jump forward. And then don't touch anything, except F or E or whatever your use key is once a tutorial message uh, pops up. But yeah, uh, I go for this route instead of the other one, even though this is much slower. Because this looks better, obviously. And uh, I get a ton of uh, ton of items as I'm falling. Because the way this works is... Uh, whenever I hit the bottom of the skybox, the game wraps me back to the top. And whenever I hit the bottom, I also pick up an item that happens to be nearby, or something along those lines. So this is a good way to stock up on items, especially for first runs. But yeah, the exit is on the other side of the map, so I'm also going to have to uh, wrap uh, horizontally to get there, so this does take a while. But I, I do think it's a, it's a decent way of handling the first map and getting ready for the next ones. Also, as I'm falling, uh, uh, Ali accelerates all the time, so the rate of ah uh, gets higher. If you leave the game running for like 30 minutes while falling out of bounds somewhere. Uh, you just get one continuous sound. Give that a try. <laughs> okay. This map we're gonna skip completely. Use or F to open the door. Save. I'm gonna walk on this edge and I'm gonna jump over there behind the corner. Like that. For that jump I used mouse. So normal normally when I'm turning or running around and doing turns. I'm usually using the keyboard because the mouse controls are pretty special. But for a jump like that where I need to do a really quick turn, uh, the mouse is the better way of doing things. You're really just gonna have to get used to how the camera turns. It, it doesn't feel great, but you get used to it. But yeah. Once here, just hold down, jump and forward and follow the edge of the map. To skip absolutely everything. There's some puzzle where you need to use some fountains or something. Oh, oops. 
almost almost a bad thing. I once here just jump to the exit. I st I'm still a bit unsure what causes the different jump animations to happen. It's probably it's got something to do with do you have speed and what's wrong of you and have you been jumping like right before. It doesn't matter. Over there you can pretty much always get the longer jump. Stupid looking one. Here. Just use F or mouse one. Both work. Then turn sideways and jump sideways. And just turn the camera a bit to fall down. And that is the first chapter done. Also, this cutscene is loud, so warning. I don't know why, it's uh, only on my PC that cutscene is loud. Every other computer I've tried has has been normal, but for some reason, not this one. Anyway, uh, this is a really quick and easy map. Just run through, take this path, and go too much into the hill, you can see it. And then backflip onto this coffin, or whatever this is. Normally you're supposed to pull this uh, out of the wall so you can jump on it. But you can really just jump on the edge while it's in the wall. And uh, once you're on top of it, like this, uh, switch from doing backflips to doing a forward jump and mash F, and you should land on this chain, on the on the chain, and skip the entire map. Okay, these cutscenes are still loud. The little scum has managed to escape. Be very vigilant. He is very fast and clever. The master will not be pleased if we fail. Go! Okay, first off, I'm putting away the sword, sword with R. Because we're never gonna use that. <laughs> Most likely those knives are useless. I just always pick them up. Just in case at some point I run out of items. Okay, here. Run into the corner. F1 for fireball. You can stun lock this guy if you just use the fireballs quickly enough. But if he gets too, if he gets too close, just uh, run to the opposite corner and fireball from there. You don't want to fireball him when he's like basically touching you because then you you will also take damage from the fireball. So, well, he dropped a key. You couldn't see it because he dropped too many coins at the same time. At last. Quickly. Let's go back yeah, and see you need, my you need the key to open this door. You know, I'm protected by the good genie who created me, and no one can kiss me before marrying me. Should that happen, the good genie would immediately take me back to my father. Oh. Well then, give me a kiss, my pet. Then meet me at the palace. Continue to ignore all these enemies, they're harmless. Uh, this is a small detour, because uh, there's a base with three bombs in it. There we go. Be careful with the snakes. Backflip is a good way to get away from snakes if they if they start to stun lock you. We'll see more, more about that in the next map. Okay. Here the camera takes a while to adjust, so you, you I was in control the entire time, but I opted to wait for the camera to turn so you can see what's going on here. Okay, just get over here, walk to the edge, and jump on this thing. One, uh, while you're walking, you can't fall off ledges, so it makes uh, jumps like that a lot easier. Just, well, this is self climber. Just jump over here. By now, you're out of bounds. And uh. These next couple of jumps, you're gonna have to do semi-blind, because uh, the area isn't rendering correctly. But it, it's not too precise, so I assume you got it. And be careful with saves, because I'm gonna demonstrate a save like right now, and tap forward while not walking. It's just enough to make me fall down all the way, because you can't take like a small step without walking. And while walking, you can get stuck on ledges like this, so just be careful. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a normal running start and jump before I fall off. 
that was a horrible demonstration. That's a much better one. There we go. Now we're totally out of bounds. I think the moon might actually be a decent uh, visual cue for where to go. Yeah, seems to work. Just stick close to the wall until you went up in this place. This uh, magic vial is optional, but you may as well take it. Because you're going to be using magic later on. But yeah, The goal of this map is to get all these puzzle pieces. That's the first one. So, Got to do a bit of backtracking to get to the get to the other one. These guys are really not that dangerous. Okay. Again, I'm gonna walk to the edge and then jump. You can barely make that jump, so being able to walk right to the edge is really helpful. Same with this one. Let's see. Oh, except... Except walking here is a bit finicky. You can really get stuck on the on the ledge. Yeah. Walk over here, then jump around the corner to grab the fourth puzzle piece. And keep saving all the time, because you don't know when the game is gonna crash or do something surprising. Yeah, the fifth one is just right over there. You don't need to do anything fancy to get it. Okay, once you jump here, just immediately <laughs> do backflips, do something, just get away from the snakes. Okay, I'll wait for them to move. I'm gonna kill them all with fireballs because it does seem to be the most consistent way of dealing with them. There are a total of five snakes in this area, this time uh, uh, of the three that are on the other side. Oh, never mind, I was gonna, just about to say that. Only one of them followed me, but there they are. Did I get it? I did get it. But yeah, you can get multiple snakes on one fireball. Just killing them is not even necessary if they decide not to follow you, but... At least early on I recommend killing them. It's good practice. That's the one time I use uh, open inventory button. Because it's gonna stay open for the rest of the game. Then... Uh, Mouse wheel to select a puzzle piece, and I'm just gonna hold, use Q and E to place them in the right place. There. Right mouse button to use item. There we go. Each of these has a specific spot that it needs to go on, so you can't just uh, put them in random places. Also, the middle one needs to go in last. There we go. Thank you for bringing me my good friends. We shall meet again. <laughs> okay. In this map you're normally supposed to get like 5,000 gold or something stupid. Uh, for someone to take you to the uh, second area, but obviously we're just gonna skip it. First, we're gonna get some gold, That's the, that 50 is gonna come in handy later on. And then we walk uh, to the edge of the staircase, and well, you can't turn the camera, but you just gotta rely on getting this and land out of bounds. And then, surprise, surprise, just stay on the edge of the level this point. Jump across. If you, uh, I, th I think if you keep the camera kind of low, uh, you can see better what's going on. It seems to avoid some of the rendering issues. Okay. And once you're over here, walk, walk to this corner right here. And this is why I'm using a, a 1024 by 768 resolution. You probably can find some other setup, but uh, you can see in the horizon there's a bunch of buildings. And uh, specifically on the right side, right at the edge of the horizon, there is that building with a slightly taller building with two towers. I'm lining this jump so that uh, that building is barely on screen. And once that's the case, just jump forward and wait for a while, and I should land uh, near the end of this uh, this level. 
if you want to play on some other resolution, then just figure out another setup or just to wing it. I don't think it's too precise. But the one time I attempted to do that without lining it up, I failed, so... Yeah. Okay. We gotta kill that lizard man, because uh, he has the key to the palace door. Uh, he, he can be killed with two knives. You basically never want to use the sword for combat. The sword is clumsy and shit. Whereas the knives are actually effective. The first row has to be pretty high strength. There's a strength meter on the left. And the second one can be just, just a quick tap. So I'm holding down one. There. And then just tap again. And that's the lizard man taken care of. Pick up the key and make a save at this point. You, you might even want to make a hard save. Because uh, you can't save in the next map. Oh, thanks. Now, you can't save here until you've uh, done one of the most important tricks in the run. If you do, the trick won't work. Okay, so go to this wall and jump at it. There. And it pushes you out of bounds. And this is kind of a just find a feel for it type of jump that you have to do. Uh, I'm just gonna jump in this direction forward and then I'm gonna turn the camera a tiny bit. Uh, I think there's like a larger building in the horizon that I'm gonna aim for. You'll, you'll see and I will see once I actually jump. So yeah, there we go. And now I'm just gonna wait and when I get the flute I'm gonna select it and quick save. Because uh, Select it and quick save. There we go. Uh, if you ever save and load during this map before getting the flute, the flute won't appear in here. And at this point, I'm just looking for uh, a yellow dot in the horizon, which is the end of the level. You can probably see it uh, flash by. Yeah, there it, there it goes. So aim towards it, and once I see it again... Let's see... Trying to react to it if I could see it at all. Oh, it's going too fast. Okay. I'm just gonna start jumping forward and uh, hope I get close to it. This is. This is not a precise thing. Oh, there we go. Just go towards it and hope you survive the landing. I don't think I've ever survived the landing on the first try. Just hop somewhere in there and. There we go. Okay, then we have this wonderful minigame, Dancing. Uh, the controls are WASD, uh, Jump, and Attack. Uh, I don't know how many of these you're gonna do in a row to succeed, but I do know that they have to be uh, uh, in, a, in a row. Yes. So if you mess up at any point, uh, the streak uh, starts over. May may take you a few tries on the first try. The timing timing for these is not too precise. Yeah, even that counted. Where am I? Who are you? Also, I forgot to split. I'm so sorry. Not look terribly noble. Look at me. And yet I feel troubled, attracted, bewitched. I am overwhelmed with joy from being near you. Quick, let us go see my father so that he may unite us. Okay, uh, one reason why I don't think this is a good, as a super serious speed game, I mean, why would you want to play this as your super serious game, is that there's a thing called uh, uh, Dialogue Skip. And uh, she's one of the people who can do it pretty often. And uh, it's not something I... I've been able to figure out how to control in any way. Sometimes it just happens. Sometimes it's great because it saves a lot of time. Sometimes it's bad because it skips funny dialogue. Uh, but every now and then, an NPC is supposed to have a long, like, 30 second dialogue with you, and it just gets completely skipped for no apparent reason. And that can. Uh, <laughs> it can save you a ton of time in a run, but you can't control it, so. Whether you want to be super serious about this game or not, I'll leave that up to you. Anyway, this map is pretty linear. 
Oh, except I forgot. Map changed, or episode changed, so the resolution changed, which may means that my mouse is once again free. So I need to tap outside the window, tap inside the window. There we go. You need to break all three of these to get the get the 40 gold, which you do want because you will be buying a lot of bombs later on. And I completely skipped over how to do flu jumps. I'm so sorry. Uh, flu jump is uh, a super easy technique, which you do by uh, jumping and then you pressing use item while having the flute selected. Uh, you don't even have to hold down jump or forward if you just do one jump forward, flute, flute, it keeps going. And once you complete the animation, like the jumping animation, uh, you can start doing different kinds of jumps. So if I just hold down left, I'm gonna keep going left even if I'm not touching the keyboard at all. Yeah, it's... I'd say it's a, it's a pretty easy infinite jump by any any standards. But yeah, once once you get here, just hop out of bounds over here, and I'm gonna fall down, and I'm gonna do four flu jumps forward uh, until I end up under that building, and after that, I'm gonna re fall down a bit so that the animation completes. Switch to neutral jumps and uh, have Ali's head clip through the floor of that building. And once his head goes through, the rest of the body will follow. And uh, I'll be back in bounds, right next to the exit. Let's see. One, two, three, four. And switch to neutral jumps. There we go. And just hop down the hole to complete the level. I'm really low on health, this is a bit scary. Okay. Just follow the path until you get to this area. Uh, there are five doors like this that uh, can open, can be opened with the button. Only one of them leads to the next area, the other four are traps. Okay, I'm really close to dying, this is not good. Okay, uh, before they kill me, I'm gonna have to pause and explain this. Okay, so I'm once again aligning myself with the wall before doing a clip. Then I'm gonna do neutral jump, uh, flu jump, so I once again clip Ali's head through the ceiling. Ali clips through all the way, and once that happens, I'm just gonna do one normal jump forward, no flute involved, and keep holding forward. No need to hold jump, just forward, and uh, you probably can't see anything at that time, but you should be able to hear Ali vibrate through the wall into another room. So, jump, clip through, clip through the ceiling, jump forward, hold forward, wait. So, jump. That was a horrible demonstration because the camera wasn't where I wanted it to be. There we go. Clip, forward. There we go. I'm actually gonna heal at this point because... As funny as the uh, near-death sound is, I'd rather not die and just walk close to this door to use it. If you for some reason don't automatically use it, then just press F or mouse 1 and it should be fine. Select the again and <laughs> align yourself with this wall and uh, there's an invisible ceiling here that you need to get through. It can be a bit finicky at first. But I think uh, doing like two full jumps with the flute gets you pretty close to the height you need to get Ali's head through. So one, two, clip, and then just jump once forward and fall until the level ends. Also, I totally forgot to split again. Sorry, I, I wanted to have the split so you can keep track of how far into the run this is and easily maybe like skip into video. But uh, I'm really not used to using splits in anything. I prefer just uh, just a timer. So I'm probably gonna keep missing splits. There we go. 
gotta talk to the gardener, unfortunately. Good day, Lord Gardener. I'm the new apprentice. Oh, you do seem awfully young for this profession, lad. It's just not like in the olden days. Well, to start with, go get me some pear pips in the fruit garden. I need them for my experiments. The password is at the Akaba Faith Plant Hydrangeas. Got it? Me neither. Okay. First, we need the bucket to get the pear pips. What? As soon as I'm close to that corner, I'm gonna start casting a fireball because there's a god uh, to the left of me. And I want to kill him before he gets to me. And he's gonna aggro immediately. I still have just enough mana to do that. So get over here. Get rid of the guard and press the, <laughs> press the use key to grab the bucket and then we get to the most exciting part of the speedrun. Walking really slowly with a bucket. Okay, to be fair, this door is a bit annoying to use with the bucket. I'm gonna leave it a bit far farther back than I may be necessary, because uh, open door and pick up bucket are in the same key. So if, if the bucket is right next to the door, you will probably just pick up the bucket instead of opening the door and... Uh, because Ali is so occupied by holding the bucket, he can't open the door while carrying it. So you do need to drop it. And I uh, forgot to mention that to drop the bucket, you press uh, the holster weapon key. In my case, that's R. Password. At the Akaba Feast, Count Agrangia. Yeah, it's good. You can go. Still no idea what it is. Skip the super important cutscene. R to drop the bucket. I'm completely out of mana at this point, so I'm gonna have to use one of these potions. Now, I need to get rid of these two guards, because as soon as I start solving the bus puzzle, they aggro me. And they're just much easier to deal with uh, before any of that happens, so... One fireball each. At least I hope, because hitting this guy is a bit difficult, because the fireball trajectory is... It's awkward, to say the least. Luckily, I got in the first shot. If you don't hit him on the first shot, that's fine. By now, you should have enough mana potions to, to miss a whole bunch of times. Yeah. And to use the bucket, press mouse 1. It's super exciting. Unfortunately, I don't think we're ever gonna be able to skip this puzzle, because uh, uh, the chapter ends when you complete it, so there's no no other exit trigger you could just walk into. Maybe there's a way we could figure out that that makes Ali walk faster with the bucket, but uh, I'm not optimistic. But hey, maybe someone, maybe maybe you, you specifically, will learn this game and figure something new out. Just, I'm I'm sure there's still a lot lot to be discovered with this game, because there are like three runners total so far. So plenty of uh, unexplored territory. Okay, and as soon as I place water in the last thing, the cutscene plays in the chapter ends. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, I, I named the next two missions Pain and Suffering because they used to be really bad, but hopefully they will cause less pain to you people, because we, we have figured out the routes a bit better than previously. We can skip some of the puzzles that uh, were giving, giving, giving us trouble in the, in the past. Oh yeah, I'm kind of in control during that cutscene, so you could see Ali turn around. Gotta love this cutscene. 
Okay, so first of all, put away the sword. We're not gonna be fighting. Grab the tasty fruit. Sw uh, switch back to the flute and get out of here. I think you're supposed to kill the tiger to uh, open the gate. I don't think I've ever done that. Pick up the pear and soon after just just eat it. As always, mouse to use items. Here, Lord Garner, here are the tips. Oh, they're not very big. <laughs> it's just not like in the olden days. Well, it don't smell too good round here. That's normal, kid. I'm trying to create the flower of a thousand cents. It doesn't work every time. Instead of hanging about like an old magpie, go get my hoe. It's in the chest, in the cops. Here's the key. Alright, got the key so we can go get some items. First thing we're gonna pick up is, is the watering can. It's easy to miss it, just somehow blends in. You can, you can open the chest from this side and grab the hoe. So, when opening this door, there's a decent chance that the, an error message pops up in the top left corner of the screen. It says something meaningless, just press any key to get rid of it. The game shouldn't crash, just tells you that something is wrong. But you probably already knew that. There's plenty of wrong with this. Okay, then come back and solve this puzzle. It's four, two... Eight or stack two zeros stacked three because why not and it ends and begins with the same number that is actually how I remember it probably there are probably better ways how it works for me okay, plant a thousand cents next we're gonna clip through the ceiling and at this point because this ceiling in particular is annoying to get through I think uh, you don't want to like bash Ali's head against the against the ceiling completely. Uh, it is possible to be too close to, to get the clip to work, so just let yourself fall a tiny bit before attempting again. If you if it seems like you're not going through. I was gonna say that this looks too close but it worked, so never mind. Okay, and I'm gonna aim uh, just forward, staying about as high as I am and go for the corner of the skybox. And eventually I should be able to see something. There we go. There are, there's a bunch of invisible walls in that direction, so I'm taking a bit of a longer route and going through here. There are probably more optimal ways to do this, but this worked for me. Also, that just reminded me, uh, if you are doing flute jumps, uh, and instead of uh, just jumping again immediately, uh, Ali, Ali decides that you should play the flute. If you quick save, you can skip the animation. But again, be careful with the quick saves because there's only one slot and you can screw yourself over if you use it at a bad time. Okay, so this is one of the best skips in the game. The normal route is to redirect the water to this area, so decently lengthy puzzle. But I'm guessing this is like a debug thing. If you press T on the keyboard, the flower just spawns. You can also hit T multiple times to have multiple flowers spawn, which may mess up the, uh, the HUD and the inventory. You know, just Arabian Nights things. Yeah, just press T. You can do it actually at any point during the level. Grab, get the rainbow flower, or in my case, two. And get out of here. Once again, I'm gonna aim for the corner of the skybox. Although it's a different corner this time. It doesn't get me directly where I wanna be, but uh, it's a good indicator. And it makes the next area render. There we go. Just turn right, and uh, this side of this room. Oh, whoops! This side of this room uh, doesn't have collision, so you can just 
jump in through there. Uh, the other walls don't work. Maybe you could get over there, don't know, but I know this works for a fact. And then to get completely back in bounds, just jump at this doorway and uh, vibrate through. Again, turning the camera might help you go faster. Okay, get the cactus. Passport is not important, but we get it anyway. And uh, there's another invisible ceiling that you need to go get through. Invisible ceilings tend to be a bit more annoying than anything else, surprisingly. Alright. And once you're here, you don't have to fluid jump because you are on top of a ceiling. Okay, and the exit of the map is somewhere over there. And this might be just pure superstition, but I think you have a higher chance of surviving this jump. If you make, make a save and load it immediately before you go for the jump. Because I used to die to something when doing this, then I started do doing save, load, and jump. And I haven't died since. Watch as I prove myself wrong. Nope, did work. Good. There are a couple of times in the game where saving and loading seems to make a difference. I have a pass, signed by the Grand Vizier himself. By the Grand Vizier? In that case, you can go. Okay, this is this map is one long fetch quest. That lousy black moon sect is infiltrating everywhere. But and uh, just unfortunately, you can't really skip any of the any of the bits. If you want information? You've only got to go see the town guide. Ahmed, open the door. Also, in this map, you definitely want to be saving a lot because. I think this is the most crash-heavy area in the game. Okay, I'm not gonna just go into too much detail about where I'm going, because, well, I hope you can see. So this is just something you gotta memorize. So the frame rate can take a big hit here. Grab some money from this base, and then we, we're gonna go... Uh, get a better sword. It's necessary to get to the next map, even though we're probably never gonna use that sword to kill anything. Okay. If you get too close to this guy, he talks to you and says like, I will train with you if you pay 20 gold or whatever. But uh, we are a bit short on gold. So instead of, instead of that, I'm just gonna press 2. And like the knives, I can throw it farther if I, if I hold it down. Yeah. I'll throw a bomb, he takes damage, he aggroes, the fight begins without me paying him anything. There you go. Oh. Okay, he did hit him. Good. Now I just keep running past him and throwing bombs. Just try to manipulate his movement so he takes as much damage as possible. Okay, he didn't die to four bombs, so I'm gonna finish him off with the sword. Or at least try. This combat is super finicky. It's the only time in the game where I use a sword. Could also just use a fifth bomb. But, uh, like I said, bombs. I'm a bit short on bombs, so I'll play it safe. Daggers don't damage him, I'm pretty sure. But I keep my word. Take this weapon, and don't let me see you again. Yeah, I'm, I don't think daggers or fireballs do damage to him, so gotta go for sword or bombs. Again, put away the sword, we're not gonna use that. And get to the next area. Some gold behind this corner. There we go. And some gold in this pot. Okay. Let's buy a few bombs. I typically get seven bombs here, but depending on your gold route, it might be different. Actually, I can get eight bombs this time. Uh, 
point is buy as many as you can, but make sure you have 60 gold left after you after you're done shopping. I've somehow got an, a bit extra, so I can go for eight. Yeah. You're gonna need 60 gold for talking to guides later in the game, so you wanna make sure you have that. And uh, you don't really get a chance to get more gold. Uh, at least at least quickly. Uh, I'd prefer that you tell me a bit okay, more that was a dialogue skip. The, the guide is supposed to talk first, but somehow he didn't, so that probably saved like 10 seconds. And he didn't give me the whole speech, so that probably saves like 30 seconds total. I didn't do anything, but hey, I saved time. Serious speed game. <laughs> yeah. That's the first 20 gold you gotta use while to talk to that guy. And after you're done talking to him, you can go talk to her. Charming lady, are you Irma? No, my hands. Okay, and while she's talking, Me. hold down jump and right because as good. as soon as uh, the dialogue ends, these enemies will attack. But if you're buffering uh, an input to jump away, you can probably avoid the damage. the guard in the watchtower. You better hurry if you want to catch her. She left a while ago. There we go. Okay, and uh, this section is on a timer, because we need to go talk to Irma, and she is by the watchtower, but if you take too long to get to the watchtower, she moves. And uh, I think there's been an instance where she just isn't at the watchtower, nor is she at the place where she goes next, and... I don't know, she just disappears. So, this may take a couple of attempts. So, maybe make a hard save around this time, in, in case you want to be sure that you get this to work. Either way, I'm gonna run straight to the watchtower and then I'm gonna show you where she appears if she's not at the watchtower. Assuming I make it there in time. It's surprisingly uh, precise. Yeah, this seems to be the best way to, to the watchtower. Ah, yeah, finally. there she is. Armor the redhead. What can I do for you, Harrison? The guide told me you could tell me about the Black Moon set. Ah, that must have been. What a blabbermouth. He's not the only one, though. The Tom Tom player, he's a talker too. In bed. He's a former sect member. I think he could inform me. Okay. And if she's not there, just go back. And she should, should appear around here, I believe. But anyway, once you're done talking to her, just okay, don't tell talk me to him stories. and you're done. I know you're a former member of the Black Moon set. And don't waste my time, otherwise I'll denounce you to the Grand Vizier's guards. Oh, sure. Not so loud. I was kicked out of this sect a long time ago for incompetence. What do you want with me? Show me the passage to the sewers. Okay, let's go. Alright, and it, you probably take damage in this cutscene, but to avoid taking more damage, uh, just hold back and jump to get away from the enemies. Okay. There we go, and jump back, back forward. F to open the door, and F to open this door and not walk through it. There we go. And episode 6. Select the flute and skip like everything. These trims alone skip like, I don't know, half the map. Okay. So uh, as soon as I pick up that magic turban over there, uh, these uh, cages will open and a bunch of scorpions will attack. So. Maybe don't spend too long here because they poison you and poison is bad. You need antidotes to get 
rid of poison and I have none. Yeah. And uh, poison will kill you, there's no way to heal with heal without uh, antidotes. Yeah. Grab this grab the turban. Head back here. Jump through the ceiling. As the, as usual. And then uh, hug the hug the wall to your right. Just so you can see at all where you're going. There we go. Go through. Jump forward. There's the wall. Oh, jumped a bit too high. Oh, just jumped too high again. That was probably not the best demonstration on how you're supposed to do those jumps. In fact, it was so bad that I'm going back. This is kind of how it's supposed to look like. Yeah. And land on top of this door. Uh, there are there's four enemies in the in the room. One of them has a key to the door that ex uh, is the end of the level. And you do need to kill him. You can't just clip through. Because of, you know, triggers. Uh, I think you could just stand on top of this door and maybe throw a bomb or a fireball at him. That would work possibly, but I find it a bit difficult to get a precise enough clip so that you you are able to attack them, but they're not able to attack you. So I'm just gonna go into the room, run in a circle for a bit, for a bit and then toss fireballs at them, like as you were about to see. Uh, two of the enemies throw knives at you, so you gotta get a bit close to them to make them attack normally instead of, um, instead of with the knives get in just okay I've never seen that before just hold forward until uh, you vibrate through it okay so I'm gonna get close to these guys so they aggro run in a circle for a bit oh he's still not throwing knives there we go and F1 for fireball that was a bit close okay opposite corner and another fireball Nice miss. Okay, he gets stuck throwing knives again. Unfortunate. If you want to be really optimal about this, you aim for the uh, the stronger melee guys, because uh, one of them has to has to key. And. Typically, it's always the guy I kill last who has the key. Yeah, there we go. Okay. I was previously saying about some how I might be superstitious about saves and loads. Here I know for a fact that you gotta save and load for this trick to work. Or... So I forgot to... No, I didn't forget to split. I do it right now. Ha! Huh. <laughs> but yes, this is uh, casually one of the longer maps in the game, I think. You gotta... Kill a bunch of enemies, get some amulets, I don't know, place them somewhere, and then get stuck on a puzzle that you can't solve. That's basically my experience of this casually. But, if you just, without pressing anything as you enter, jump up, through the ceiling, and jump to the left, the level ends. That's it. Uh, if you feel like you're short on gold, you, you will still get, get a chance to buy more bombs and you will still need at least 40 gold to beat the game, uh, you can just jump up and jump to the left, and you're gonna be falling for, I don't know, 45 seconds, but you will also pick up uh, 500 gold, which is more than enough for anything. But if you are happy with your money situation, save, load, and uh, jump to the ceiling, and jump to the left. Because for some reason, that save and load uh, speeds this process up a lot. You don't get the gold, but the level ends really fast. That's that's the entire thing. Okay, prison town. Which I call prison town because for some reason you need a permission to leave and uh, the gate controls are on the outside. Uh, I've had one instance where the boss of this area spawns on my head, right here. If you ever see that happen, Congratulations, that probably saves like a minute, because you can just throw fireballs at him and he's stuck mid-air. But, if you are not as lucky and the usual happens, just just go fluid jumping. I, 
I don't really have a visual cue here, just like, it's a bit of an angle once you stop seeing anything. And you need to go pretty high on this one, so you can get over this. But like, like you can see, this area is pretty big, so it's not too difficult. Yeah, Land on the side of the map, so you can uh, spam fireballs from safety. And uh, this time we're gonna use uh, the charge fireball. This is why we got the, the jewel in the beginning, because there, the, the way the spells work in this game is that you have the ring, which allows you to do the basic spell. Like, we've been so far using fireballs, that's the basic one. But if I hold down F1, and you can see the icon, it changes to a bigger fireball. I get a different spell. And because this guy is tough, we're, we will want to use those spells. This is also typically where mana potions come into play. Even if it looks like your mana pool is too empty for a big fireball, it isn't. You can, even if uh, you have a tiny bit of mana left, like I have right now, it is still enough for a, for a full fireball. Oh, that's unfortunate. Walk back to him, get the permission to leave, and get out. You just saved this guy's life, congratulations. And this is another save and load thing that may or may not do anything. Because right here, you can jump, jump right through this wall, it doesn't exist. And I feel like this works better if you save and load before going for it. Because this should place you on the other side of town, uh, into a cutscene where a guard tells you that you need a mount. Save a load. Jump. And... Hey, come on. Yes. That's enough. Open up. All my papers are in order. Are you a moron or what? You can't get out without a mount. <laughs> and this is why you saved up gold previously. This is uh, an unfortunate piece of dialogue, because I, I don't think I've ever had a dialogue skip here. And it's maybe the longest uh, single piece of dialogue in the game, and it's not interesting. So let's become the 1000th visitor. I can give you a commentary on the ramparts. This city ramparts. Yeah. As well as the great I'm really not sure if there even is 40 gold on this map. I would assume so, but I have no idea where it is. So if you are out of money at this point, soft lock maybe, I don't know. But like I said, there are, there is the 500 gold you can get in the previous map if you really need it. if this is going to be skippable either, but hey. <laughs> Mustafa had his thousand visitor. You can take the beast. He's ready to go. I fill him up for the week. Have a good trip. 
Hey, maybe someone picks this game up and figures out how to skip that bullshit. Hate controls on the outside. Always amuses me. Nepo, Nepo, Want to guess how we're gonna beat this level? So there's a convenient gap in the wall right here, and we have a flute, so... Just do a couple of jumps until you are out of bounds, and once there, the corner of the skybox. Once again, it's a great visual cue. In case of these jumps, you want to be getting a bit of height all the time. Because uh, the ending is way higher than... Uh, or not way higher. It's a bit higher than the start. If you see this tunnel, that's a good sign. You need to go over it. Just keep going, and there should be a, a green lake on, on the bottom right sometime soon. Also a good sign. And right after that spawns, we should also see the boss room. Or maybe we just won't see the lake. Either way, just aim for the corner and you will end up here. Yeah, there's the lake. Okay, this is the boss. Uh, normally you're supposed to have... Uh, a protection spell level 3 that uh, lets you approach this enemy normally, because uh, she's gonna turn into stone if you get too close. And uh, the only way I've been able to ever defeat her, because I have no idea where that spell is, is to uh, get, a, get above her, out of bounds, so she can't attack. Or so that you can avoid being in, in the trigger area. Yeah, get above her, and then just Chug some bombs. Uh, it takes three or four bombs to kill her, depending on how well they hit. I I usually only throw three at her. Yeah, she died. Uh, if she doesn't die to the third bomb, uh, depending on how you're feeling about your bomb situation, you can either drag a fourth one or you can uh, use knives as a backup. I personally go for knives because. I may need bombs in, a, in in an upcoming fight. And once she's dead, just hop under the map and talk to the princess from out of bounds. Or you don't have to press anything to talk, you just get close enough to trigger this uh, cutscene. And now I'll have all the little princesses just to myself. Hmm. I think I'll just take a little stroll over to the merchants. You can never be too sure. Okay, and now's the second chance to buy some bombs. But since I my money situation was different from usual, I at the moment cannot afford to pay 25 gold for a bomb. Normally I would... Well, usually I would get one extra bomb here. But not this time. I do recommend getting extra bombs if you can. Just for safety. Also, let's get split. Okay. Be careful at the beginning of this fight because uh, the vizier will attack you immediately after the cutscene. So, like, be ready for it. Make a save as soon as the cutscene ends and jump backwards and dodge whatever he's doing. Most of his attacks are harmless, like he uses a shield or some blinding spell that doesn't actually blind you. But he also has fireballs and uh, a slowdown spell. In fact, you represent a threat to the kingdom, and that threat must disappear. Save and head back. Yeah, that's the blinding spell. And then head to this corner and hope he doesn't do a fireball. It's a slowdown spell. Yeah, I'm just gonna load and try again. Okay, we, we made it through. That was surprisingly painless. That that clip is one of the more awkward ones in the game because you really need to do it quickly. So the Sultan doesn't kill you. He tends to get stuck near this pillar, so just come back to him and chuck some bombs. 
And sometimes he goes over there for some reason. In which case you follow him and throw the bombs over there. Okay, that was good. Only took three hits. And one, once he dies, you need to get back in bounds. And this door frame is the best way to do so, I think. Uh, it is still a bit finicky. You can sometimes fall straight down and die to fall damage. But man, it's still the best we've got. Just hold forward and turn. Oh, didn't quite get it. Wanna be like over here? Oh, and just fall. I was about to like clip through or vibrate through the through the wall over there, but that area is it is sketchy how it works. Point is, this doorway is the least solid area nearby. So go there, wiggle about, you'll eventually be back in bounds. And then just go pick up uh, the parrot seeds from his corpse. And repeat the clip. This time you're not in a hurry, so it's much easier. Watch as I fuck it up like 12 times now that I said it. Oh my god, it's actually happening. There we go. Okay, in order to stay still while while out of bounds, actually, I think I moved a bit. There we go. Uh, yeah, that looks good. In order to stay still, I'm uh, strafing, well, in this case, to the left, while lining the next jump up. Uh, the way I line this next jump up is, uh, you you can maybe see uh, like behind the clouds there are two stars on top of each other, uh, right above Ali's head. I wish this game had a crosshair, <laughs> even when not using fireballs. But yeah, um, I'm looking at those two stars and aim so that they are just to the left of Alice's head. Like that, that looks good. Then I'm gonna jump forward, do one flute jump, I should land on, uh, uh, on an area, or on above an area. I'll get a couple of jumps uh, on, on top of that ceiling, then I'll fall completely out of bounds. And hopefully, eventually, I'm gonna land uh, somewhere near the exit of the level. So, one jump forward, flute. Didn't work. Great. Okay, try that again. Maybe my flute jump was poorly timed. There we go. That's how it's supposed to go. Except, no, I may. Have, yeah, I must have uh, taken a step while lining this up. So I took a step forward, line it with that, jump, jump. There we go. That's how it's supposed to look like. And now we fall. And hopefully, there are two ways I can land. I can either land inside the room or above the room. Both are fine. Okay, I landed inside the room and I'm still sidestepping because game buffers inputs. If you land in this room, which is great, you want to be here, just go next to this uh, bookshelf and press mouse one views, and you'll end up here and you just give the parrot seeds to the parrot and that ends the level. Or if you uh, don't end up inside the room but above it, which may be a bit difficult to realize because can't always see what's going on. Uh, but once you're in this situation, just turn the camera down, try to locate the bookshelf below you. Right now it's easy to see because I opened the pathway. And uh, head towards uh, the room behind the bookshelf. And you may have noticed I was able to get in through this hole in the ceiling. Just go for that and do a flute jump while falling to avoid fall damage. And that also gets you in, then you don't have to push the bookshelf. They're, they're both about equally fast, I think. And most importantly, they get you to the end. Yeah, then just use the parrot. Although, worth pointing out, don't go over here and feed the parrot. Because that is... I'm not sure if that's a hard log, actually. Because uh, if you're behind the bird cage when you give you the parrot seeds, uh, Ali's pathing path will break and he'll get stuck in that corner 
uh, and you'll be stuck in a cutscene. There's nothing you can do about it. There we go. idea where this last level takes place. But yeah, normally there is uh, a long boss battle and some super deadly bases and all kinds of stupid shit. But I, I recommend you dig into one if you ever get this far in the game. But if you just want to beat the game, you're gonna do some neutral jumps up, clip through the ceiling, and then do what I'm planking at. Then do four jumps to the to the right. The last one of which is a flute jump. And uh, that should get you stuck on a wall. And you can just, once that happens, you can just turn the camera and vibrate through. And you'll be in the final room. Let's see if I remember correctly. So, get over here. One, two, three, flute. And I landed on the wall. Except I, well, I stopped holding a key, so I completely fell. Had I had I started holding forward, that would have worked. So let's do that again. One, two, three, flute. And then just turn as soon as you can and figure out a camera angle that lets you vibrate faster. And then just use any one of these with. Any key but that. How did I hit mouse 2 when I was trying to hit mouse 1? And that ends the game. Don't know if there's anything else to, else to add. It's uh, it's a relatively simple speed game. It's, it's better as a speedrun than you would expect. There's an actual tech. You, the moon speed is fast. As I have the same it's fun. As the princesses, you must embrace me. So that I can be beamed to the palace where I'll be with my daughters. They belong to you henceforth, and shall be your wives. And I appoint you, Grand Vizier, in place of he who failed at the task. Come on, just another little try, son. If that's not too much to order. <laughs> Another quality dialogue skip. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Over here, treasures. Ali, Ali. Over here, treasures. Ali, the camel. Hey, you dog. So yeah, uh, if you have any questions about the run, like, leave a comment so other people can see it as well. If I forgot to explain something, it's at least in the same place. Uh, if it's related to how the game works technically, because it crashes and burns, I probably really won't know the answer. You might just be unlucky with your setup. But as far as the run goes, it's not that complicated. It's just, you gotta get over the hurdle of, oh my god, these controls are bad. But once you get there, the rest is pretty simple. Yeah. There you go.